Hello again guys, this is Wavezier. If you want to access all the videos in this series, just go to Google and type Slidener Udemy and you'll be taken straight to my profile on Udemy. I have several paid and free courses and the best part is that I have coupons on all the paid courses since you're watching this on Slidener. It is exclusively for you. In your case, select the first course that talks about design and code. And right here, notice there's an option that says redeem a coupon. Just click on that and type slide nerd over here, click apply and bam, you will notice that the price is immediately cut off by a high margin. So now all you have to do is click take this course here and you have to log in and you're ready to go. In this video, we are going to talk about the Realm database for Android. First, let's take a look at all the database products out there. There are several of them and you probably heard about these if you worked with databases in Android before. Let's take a look at the difference between SQLite and Realm. A database like SQLite has several tables where each column is an attribute and each row is an object. So if you want XYZ, a table that is constructed by querying the three different tables containing these columns and performing join operations, you can easily see that it's quite a performance overhead depending on the size of each table. But in Realm, all the objects are stored just like they would be stored in a bunch without ordering them in any particular fashion. So you can directly get the object E from A by navigating through the relationships. So let's take a look at what Realm stands for. The most important feature is zero copy. So in simple words, if you have an item that is being repeated in SQLite, it will be stored three separate times. Whereas in Realm, you will have one main copy of the object and all the other similar objects will simply refer or point to that copy and its values as you can see in the arrow here. So let's take a look at the features of Realm. It's returned in C++, supports every platform, mainly Objective-C, Android and Swift. So it has faster reads and write operations, the queries perform better in Realm and it has a smaller file size in terms of the library that you're going to add. So let's compare some features and get an idea. So here is Realm compared with SQLite and other databases. You can see how it performs for both queries and insert statements. And at the end here, there is a comparison between Realm and SQLite for all the items like batch write, where you write multiple items, simple write, where you just store one item, simple query, full scan, which would be scanning all the rows or getting all the data from the database, some operations where you try to summarize the value, some value in the database, count operations where you would try to count something from the database. So let's take a look at the model in Realm and figure out what we need. So there are some data types that Realm supports like Boolean, short, int, long, float, double string, and so on. And there are some annotations which we'll be taking a look at in the next slide. So there is our schema of a simple class called user. So if you want to create a table in Realm, what you basically do is make a class, make sure that it extends Realm object, give getters and setters, which you normally do, and specify the primary key. Notice the annotation at the rate primary key here to indicate that the name must be a primary key. Now, honestly, this is a bad idea to keep the name as a primary key because two people can have the same name. They should probably pick something else like the identity number or social security number of some kind. So there is an attribute here at the rate ignore and annotation, which indicates that this item session ID should not be stored in the realm database. So the table is going to have two columns, name and age. So let's take a look at the process or what realm does when you create a class like what you did in the previous slide. So the first step which you saw right now was how to create a realm subclass by extending from realm object. Now Realm creates a proxy class for your subclass. In simple words, it is a class that extends from your class and puts some fancy methods out there to check if the database is valid, the table is valid and so on. So all these files are compiled and whenever the private fields are used anywhere, Realm is going to replace them with getters and setters. Now this happens at bytecode level and then there is your compilation where dex is generated and you're all set to run Realm on your phone. So let's take a look at how we can create objects. There are two ways to create objects. 
first step notice that we begin something called a transaction now all types of write operations in realm involve something called a transaction indicating that either it should complete successfully or it should fail in simple words you want both not john and the email to be stored or none of them to be stored you don't want just an email with an invalid name or vice versa so you begin the transaction you commit the transaction you create an object by saying rel dot create object notice that we have specified user dot class here to indicate that you want to create an object of type user which is exactly what you get here now this user object doesn't have anything in it it's a blank object you set values on this object and those values are going to be saved to your realm database which is exactly what's happening here now let's take a look at the other way of creating objects same thing here except you say user user is new user john now this is the plain old java way of creating objects using a constructor that accepts an argument you set an email then you begin a transaction commit a transaction use this method called copy to realm now remember that copy to realm will store the value if it doesn't exist and the way it checks that is by using the primary key if there is no person called john then this user will be copied otherwise you're going to get an error so anything that you do in realm like creating an object or trying to modify a value is basically considered to be a write operation and realm has certain rules on how writes work first of all they block each other in simple words if you're writing 10 objects they won't be returned in parallel in your database rather they'll be going one after the other so that means they are going to block your user interface till the time they are executing. So rates are not blocked while a write transaction is open. That's pretty good. You can read while you're writing. A write transaction can either be committed or cancelled. Like you saw in the previous two slides, we were committing them because we were sure that things are good. But let's say you download something from the internet and it is corrupt and you don't want to save that to your database. You can always cancel the transaction which means nothing will be stored. Now asynchronous transactions are a nice feature in Realm. Like I said earlier, writes block each other, but you can perform write transactions on a background thread and keep your user interface responsive, which is exactly what you should do if you're using Realm. So the method copy to Realm is going to store an object if it doesn't exist. Now copy to realm or update will store an object if it doesn't exist or update its value in some way if it already exists out there. So these two methods as you saw will return a user object. Now there is one thing which I didn't tell you in the previous slide which is right here. Now notice that this returns a realm user object here. Now any changes you perform to this realm user object are saved to the realm database. But if you modify the original user object by saying user dot set blah 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 that's not gonna work because realm only tra tracks the objects that are returned by it by saying realm dot copy to realm now instead of saying realm dot begin transaction and realm dot commit transaction there is one more way of doing the same you can say realm dot execute transaction notice that it takes an object of type realm dot transaction and it has a single method called execute now you don't have to write begin and commit inside this you can directly create your object by saying user is realm dot create object and then set the values and that's it the values are saved to your database now asynchronous transactions would look one step more than this let me show you how that looks so you say the same thing execute transaction this time notice that there is a second argument here that says realm dot transaction dot callback that is the type of the second argument now it has two methods on success and on error now if things are good on success is called where you can display some message on your user interface indicating that the transaction was successful now if there is something wrong obviously you can display that message again inside the on error method here now remember that the second argument is optional in simple words if you pass null over here in the second argument then there is no indication of when your transaction would complete and whether it was successful or failed now in the last slide we simply said realm dot execute transaction it actually returns an object of type realm async task and why do we need this object very simple when your activity or fragment is about to be destroyed then ensure that you cancel the transaction the reason for that is if you provide a callback 
in the second parameter which i haven't done here then that callback if it tries to update the app's user interface and your activity or fragment is actually destroyed then your app is going to crash so let's take a look at the final topic in this video which would be how you make relationships in realm notice that we have a contact class and an email class and we want to say that a contact has a single email which is easily done the java way you just put the email class here as another variable inside your contact and that's all you need to do in fact this is a one-to-one -one relationship if you want a one-to-many where you say a single contact like you has more than one email you just make a realm list over here now realm list simply contains realm objects and behaves like a regular java list object now there is no restriction on how many times you can add the same email object to which realm list or different realm lists as the case may be so let's take a look at how we can use this information to build or add data where a relationship exists so there are two classes if you remember the contact contains a list of emails how will you construct or add values simple you first begin transaction then you commit transaction at the end you say contact is realm.create object set the value on it then notice how you create an email immediately you say realm.create object you create the email set the values on it and this is the most important part now contact.get emails is going to give you a realm list and it behaves just like a java array list or list if you work with it you simply call the add method there and pass the email and that's all you need to do the email and the contact details are now saved in the database when the transaction commits at the end when you're trying to fetch a list keep in mind that the getter for a realm list will never return null it will always give you an empty object that has zero items inside but never a null so in this video we have talked about what is the realm database how it performs with respect to sqlite and how you can go ahead and create a model and a basic look at transactions and relationships in the next video we are going to discuss how to perform queries in the realm database in the meantime Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day.